orthogonality in signals. Actually, I am not using any color mic because for smartphone, I am recording with the smartphone. For smartphone, uh, this noise cancellation is not happening with the color mic and a sound is being captured by that. And I observed with mic or without mic, there is no difference in the uh, strength of the signal, audio signal. So I feel that without color mic only, my smartphone is recording better. And if you feel that audio is not up to the mark, please feel free to put your suggestions in the comment section below. Don't hesitate to put any comments in the comment section below. I hope you will inform me any kind of suggestions what you want me to improve. You are most welcome for your suggestions. So with this message, let us start with a new class, orthogonality in signals. So here we are going to see what is the orthogonality condition for uh, the given two signals, when the given two signals are said to be orthogonal, what is the condition, that condition we are going to derive from. We are also going to see what is the component of one signal or another. Before that, we will learn a small concept about vectors. There is an analogy between vectors and signals. Signals can be better understood by comparing with vectors. So, in uh, reality, like in our day-to-day -day life, in order to know about a new one, we will always check whether there is any similarity between the existing one which is known to us. So, because the vectors are familiar to us, we already learned about vectors since school level in IITs, IITs, JEE or in, in, in your 11 and 12 or 10 uh, intermediate, something like that. So, vectors are familiar to us. So, all the properties of vectors are applicable to signals also. So, all the relations like, or like whatever uh, the properties are, whatever uh, the relations between uh, two vectors are also applicable to the signals. So all the concepts of vectors, if we can apply to the signals, we can easily understand the signal nature and we can analyze the signals better. So a unknown one can be better understood by comparing with the known one. So we are doing that. So first let us see what, when, when the given two vectors are said to be orthogonal. So consider a vector v1, this is the vector v1 and this is vector v2. I will write its name here, v2. And the angle between them is theta. So this is a vector v1 going in this direction and the vector v2 going in this direction. Now we are looking at when these two vectors are going to be orthogonal. So before that let us consider the component of the the one vector, let me take this small. So the component of this vector v1 on v2 or otherwise v2 on v1. So we will take this as v2 and this as v1. So the component of this vector v1 on v2 is there are so many components available, I am considering the smallest one. This is the component which is perpendicular to the vector v2. So this component is called as c12 v2. So I will write it bigger. The component of vector v1 on v2. This is vector v2. Component is c12 v2. Just indicating that 1, 2. From 1, the component is falling on the 2. So c12 v2. So this c is called the component of one vector on the Similarly, here also we are going to see what is the component of one signal and another. And here we have this new one which is formed, we will call it as error vector V. It is a error vector. And we can write this V1 in terms of V2. V1 can be expressed in terms of V2 by the formula V1 is equal to C12 V2 plus error vector. So this is the 
the representation of one vector in terms of other. V1 can be represented in terms of V2 with this formula. V1 is equal to C1 to V2 plus error vector. If there is no error vector and if there is no component, V1 will exactly look like V2. So approximation will become perfect. Or the representation of one in terms of other will be perfect. And coming to the point, when these two are said to be orthogonal, we already know that when the scalar dot product of two vectors, v1 dot v2, if it is equal to 0, then v1 is said to be perpendicular to v2. So, orthogonality condition for the two vectors is dot product v1 dot v2 is equal to 0. Coming to the signals, all the properties of these vectors are applicable to signals, so we are comparing and we are checking. So, consider two signals, one signal is f of t and other signal is x of t. Same like here, how did we consider v1 and v2? In order to represent this v1 in terms of v2, this is the formula. v1 is equal to c1 to v2 plus v. So, here also we get same. f of t will be equal to, that is just like v1 is equal to, what is the thing we wrote here? Component, component is getting multiplied to the second vector and error is added to that. So, here we will do the same. Component c is getting multiplied to the second signal plus we will get error signal. So, this is the representation of one signal in terms of other. So, f of t can be written as f of t is equal to c into x of t plus e of t. From this, we can write e of t is equal to f of t minus c into x of t. Same thing, when the appro approximation will become better, if there is no error in the approximation, and if there is no component, then f of t will exactly become x of t. Right? And coming to the condition, what is the condition for orthogonality of these given two signals that we are going to derive? Same like how did uh, we get the condition when the two vectors v1 dot v2 is equal to 0, vector v1 is said to be orthogonal to v2. So similarly here also we are going to get a similar kind of condition. So there we are going to multiply one signal with other signal and we integrate if it is equal to 0 they are said to be orthogonal. So let us do the derivation part. So here here also we can derive this formula but we already know about vectors we are not touching this part we are directly going to the signals by comparing this with the signals. So let us calculate now what is the formula for this C right and we will also obtain orthogonality condition. So this is our agenda. So let us start this derivation and let us obtain condition for orthogonality and form. So let us see what is the condition for orthogonality. So just now we have seen signal f of t can be represented in terms of x of t with this formula. We also seen from this e of t is equal to f of t minus c into x of t. In order to have the better approximation, like f of t, if it is exactly is equal to x of t, then we have to make sure that this error is minimum. There should, there should not be any error in the approximation. So there are three approaches for us here. We have to consider the error should be minimum, is the one. And the second one is, we have to calculate the energy of this signal and we have to minimize that. We have to make sure that energy is minimum. And the third approach is we can calculate the mean square error of the signal and we have to make sure that that value is small. So if mean square error value is small or if the error energy is small or if error energy is less or if the energy or if the E of T is almost negligible, then the approximation will become better. So out of these three approaches, we will go for the second one. We will calculate the energy of this signal, which is called error energy, and we will try to reduce that value. So first let us see what is the error energy. The notation for error energy is E, capital E, suffix small e. E is equal to integration 
minus infinity to infinity given signal e square t dt this is the formula for error energy so just substitute e of t in this that will be is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity or you can take any limits t1 to t2 or 0 to infinity whatever it is so complete limits are minus infinity to infinity but maximum times they will give you a interval for the given uh, approximation like t1 to t2 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 4 pi something like that so take one interval 0 to 2 pi so 0 to 2 pi you take or simply write t1 to t2 so I am writing in infinity to infinity so what is e of t given to us that is f of t minus c into x of t whole square dt so apply the formula a minus b whole square then this will become minus infinity to infinity you will get f square t plus c square x square t minus 2 here we have c term also 2c otherwise I will write it clearly it is 2c f of t x of t this is a minus b whole square I applied then after this what we have to do is in order to have this error energy to be minimum as much as less we have to differentiate this error energy with respect to c with respect to c why I am doing this step I want error energy to be minimum or I want to just eliminate this error expression, error signal in this if error is minimum or if it is almost negligible approximation will become better so I calculate error energy then I am differentiating this with respect to C why I am doing it with respect to C because I don't want the component term in the expression if there is no component in the previous uh, diagram which I shown you if there is no component in this case can you find any component of vector V1 and V2 no it's not there but in this case there are so many this is one vector this, this is one component another component third fourth so on like that this is the smallest error vector among all but if both are perpendicular if, if the angle is 90 degrees between them there is no component at all so same thing I want to do that here if there is no component then the approximation may become better without any component f of t will be directly equal to x of t so that's what I am doing that differentiation of error energy with respect to c I am doing and I am equating it to 0 so just apply this step on the given uh, expression e so that will become what dE by dc first let me do let, let me differentiate the signal in the first one there is no c term this is a constant it will become 0 so I am directly uh, applying the differentiation on the expression so first term will become 0 plus I am expanding this, this integration I am applying the integration to all the terms and applying the differentiation on that so first term is 0 plus here we have c square so this will become 2c after differentiating d, d by dc this will become 2c and the term x square of t is there here but integration is also there this is the integration term here right so I am putting that integration here minus infinity up to infinity then we have one more here this is 2c so differentiation after differentiation this will become minus 2 f of t again here integration minus infinity infinity f of t x of t dt here also dt so this we are equating it to 0 so just observe differentiating with respect to c and equating it to 0 so first term became 0 it became 2c x square t this became minus 2 f of t x of t right now just arrange the terms so this will become 2c integration minus infinity infinity x square of t dt that will be equal to integration 2 into integration minus infinity infinity f 
of t x of t dt this two and this two will get cancelled then from this obtain expression for c c will be is equal to integration minus infinity infinity f of t x of t dt by integration minus infinity infinity x square of t dt so we got an expression for c so this is the formula for c c formula is that is component of one signal other sig one signal on other signal component c is equal to integration minus infinity infinity f of t x of t dt by integration minus infinity infinity x square of t dt so this is the formula we obtain for c so target task 1 is completed and the second one is we have to obtain a condition for auto learning sorry for the disturbance so first task is completed then we want a condition for orthogonality so let us obtain a uh, get the condition for orthogonality so as we assume that after differentiating this signal with respect to c it should be, uh, after making it e equal to 0 we are expecting that c should be eliminated from this so that we will make a better approximation so when c will be eliminated so when this c will become 0 so there are two possibilities either numerator should become zero or denominator should become zero denominator cannot become zero because its energy of a given signal energy of a given signal will never become zero and moreover if it becomes zero also this value will become infinite so that is not the best possibility and the only possibility which is available to make c is equal to zero is when the numerator becomes zero then c will become zero that's why the condition for orthogonality is this minus infinity infinity f of t x of t dt is equal to 0 but if one of the given two signals if they are complex in nature then we will use this formula integration minus infinity infinity f of t x star of t dt or integration minus infinity 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 f star of t x of t dt so here x star and f star they are all complex conjugates of the given signal so you can either apply this formula or this formula or this formula to identify whether the given two signals are orthogonal or not if the given two signals are simple apply this formula if they are complex in nature then apply either this formula or this formula so that is about the condition for orthogonality of given two signals and the formula for calculating the component of a given two signals so there are two types of questions you can expect they will ask you in the examination to put one signal in terms of others so this is the formula the representation of f of t in terms of other signal x of t is f of t is equal to c into x of t plus e of t so there you have to calculate c by using this formula and sometimes they will ask you to plot the error in the approximation then use this formula f of e of t is equal to f of t minus c into x of t again you will calculate c and substitute that here so like that you can uh, use this c formula and orthogonality condition to identify the given two signals are orthogonal or not or to represent one signal in terms of others thank you for watching